would like to thank him very much for the interview and also for the air conditioning. It's 95 degrees outside at 245. Is that an official number? I think so, yeah. As of two minutes ago. It's really hot out there. Oh. Um, and so this will mark your second appearance at Boston Calling. Um, your band Fun played last time in uh, May. So do you remember anything from our last Boston Calling that makes uh, this festival unique? Um, yeah, well, it's a city festival. And that, that's rare. I think the only city festival that I really know of is like, or I've been to a lot of those. Because most festivals is like, you know, you drive out to some area and you're, you know, you're there for three days camping and it becomes very like post apocalyptic looking. But um, I like a city festival because it's, it's very like, um, sometimes the people are, are, have been through less physical stuff. Like, they, like their bodies are less beaten down, so they're more excited. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't questions here. Um, oh, and then so your new album is called Strange Desires, and it's a great album. You said that you recorded this almost in secret. Um, was that a deliberate decision, or uh, did it sort of just happen that way? It was, it, it was out of necessity more because I thought, coming from another band that people knew, I didn't want anything to... I wanted the first thing about this project to be music. Because I, thought, I was like, hey, I'm you know, making a solo record. You know, people's imaginations could run wild, and they think about things that were off center, what the center is the music, that's what matters. So I knew I wanted to release music before I spoke about it, but I also knew I had to finish the album before I released music, because picking the first song is like, you know, picking the front door of your house, and you know, you're welcoming someone in with music, so you, you can't just like throw a song out there. So it, by necessity, it turned into a whole process of, well, I guess I gotta finish this entire album without talking about it. Mm -hmm. And then, so you had awesome collaborators on this album, Yoko Ono for one, um, May Whitman uh, from Parenthood and the incredible uh, Sarah Quinn from Tegan and Sarah. I know that uh, you was still trained on the tour with Tegan and Sarah. Um, so with Yoko Ono, you can sort of hear directly her influence on the album. Um, for people who may not be familiar, how does how do collaborators add to um, an album in general? In, in many different ways. Sometimes, you know, with Yoko, it's like the part of that song I was kind of hearing in her voice in the first place, which is why I wanted her on it, because I was imagining it as like a Yoko ish part. Sarah, she does a song called Shadow, and she inspired me to write the song in the first place. It's kind of about her. She's, I mean, an artist from the New Yorker, a the therapist who talks about people's shadows, like, you know, the crappy version of himself. And so that song was very much like for her, so she sang back up to that. It's an example of a song where, you know, she's kind of tucked away in the back of the bubbles, but she inspired the whole idea of the song. Mm -hmm. And then, so, you also work with your girlfriend, Lena Dunham, um, on the music video and on the album itself. Is it different when you work with someone who you're closer with, or is it sort of the same type of working relationship? Uh, it's, it's kind of different with everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, you have different. You know, whether you're in a relationship with someone or you're just meeting someone. Every time you collaborate with someone, it's very unique. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard that working with people that you're in relationships with can be a bad thing, but we had a good experience. Awesome. But I like collaborating with someone else. Yeah. And could you ever imagine doing an album where you didn't do as much collaborating? Um, or is it more is it more fun or do you think it adds something different to the album? Well there's it's a blend. I mean most of this album it was me alone in a room, mm -hmm. like a hotel room or a plane or something, just like working on songs. So it, it, although there's clever on it, it wasn't a very clever process. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, you kinda you do things as, as they come. Maybe if you feel do more collaboration, maybe I'll do the whole thing on it. Just you kinda work in the moment you're in. And then um, so you've been a memorable steel train in the fun. Now what is it different when you record for it's very different because it's um, it's almost the exact opposite. It's like you know, being in a, in a band with other people is like bouncing ideas around, editing each other, trying to create a situation where the sum of its parts are bigger than just the people in the room. Bleachers is more just like me wrestling with ideas. It reads more and sounds more like a diary. And is this safe to say that it's more of a solo project than it is with things with Steel Train and Pop Ringer? It's sort of a member of the band, or the Bleachers are more of a um, sort of like a band type effort? It's got elements of both. I just kind of see it as like a different body of work. But, you know, live it's got a band feel. Um, and um, was it different playing um, live with Bleachers or against Bleachers? Um, or is it sort of something that you every, every band is very different. Any band that you're in, from that I've been in, it's like a whole culture once you step out on stage or in a whole other world. Um, it should be that way because if, it, if anything ever felt the same, it would be sort of irrelevant to do different things. Awesome. All right. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thanks. Thanks.